invite those of you who are logging in online to tell a neighbor, tell a friend that Ian Fellowship Baptist Church is on Facebook Live. We ask that you would share, share with your neighbor, share with your friend that we could be in worship together. We welcome you for being a part. We welcome you, those who have come to be with us in person this morning. It's good to see my daughter here in worship with us Amen. this morning. Amen. Amen. It's been a while, it's been a while. But we thank God that she has given us her presence. Not the other churches, but has given her parents' churches. Amen. Thank God for her. We ask that you continue to stay in prayer. Uh, we have a number of things that we need to do as far as the church is concerned. Um, we will be um, actually showing the church today with a, another perspective tenant, but we'll be talking about that. Um, I want to have a call meeting on this coming Monday before our prayer hour. I would like the call meeting to start at 6.30. Our prayer hour starts at 7. We have some business that we need to complete, and then we will go into prayer. So it will be a private, private prayer on this coming Monday. It will be a call meeting followed by prayer. I understand this last minute that you cannot make it. Um, please keep us in prayer. Um, we have a member who is still yet in the hospital. Our sister Stacy Abdul Kwawi want to keep her in prayer as she is still in the hospital. I found out. I went yesterday, I went to visit her about a week ago, and um, we just want to let her know that we're praying for her. Pray that she may even be watching the service. We want her to know we're praying for her with her. We're praying for the family of Pam McDonald, uh, Brother Xavier Jacobs, uh, as you know, um, has been working with his godmother <coughs> for arrangements for the family. And we understand that there will be a viewing on this coming Wednesday at Perry's from 6 to 9 p.m. I encourage you to please go by and share with the family. There is not a service hour, but I will be there uh, giving words towards the end and closing in prayer. And um, they're working on a memorial at a later date. So keep them in prayer. This is a difficult time in the season with all these things going on. Amen. 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 God is good in spite of all that we're going through and all that we're challenged with. We are living uh, in a messy life at this time and I'll talk about that on today. But we declare that the Lord is good and that this is still yet the day that he has made. Amen. 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 We come to praise him. I don't know about you, but we come to praise him. Giving him glory, giving him honor and praise. So we're going to open up this morning with every praise is to our God. Every word of worship, one accord. Every praise, lift in your hands, add in your feet. Come on, stand to your feet. Maybe you can get into the mode, into the mood. Maybe you can enter into the feet with thanksgiving. Come on, sing with me. Every praise, every Thank you. 
If you are in this sanctuary or join us virtually, thank you for joining us as we worship the Lord. This is the fourth and last Sunday of Advent. Today we meditate on the peace that Jesus brings our hearts and our world. Peace on earth will come to save when we live Christmas every day. Yeah. The ministry of the word this morning is taken from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. I will be reading from the NIV. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and his and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord our mind will accomplish this. The word of God for the people of God. Praise be unto God. Amen. 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 I will worship the one who called the raging sea. I will worship the one who hushed the raging sea. My hands I lift to you, my voice I lift to you, my heart I lift to you, I will worship you. Let us sing together the glory of my tree.
God's word, we are commanded to pray Jesus said, When you pray, not if you pray. Our worship continues as we invite Pastor Platt to come and lead us in our morning prayer. Following the prayer, Pastor Platt was your pastor of Come on, let's set the stage. What's this season? This season is about who? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. So God, we come to pray today that we don't leave one child left behind. God, we come to pray and believe that you will move by your spirit, not by your power, you said, but by your spirit and ignite the hearts and minds and the spirit of our young people and bring them back to the place where they should be worshiping you and praising you. God, we ask for a special covering over the youth worship leader on this morning. We pray for encouragement. Yeah. It's hard for young people to look out and not see people like them. Yeah. It's hard for them to come to church and not have people like them in church. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard for them to stay motivated when they can't see others being motivated. Yeah. But God, we come to call the devil a lie on today. Yeah. We rebuke everything that the devil has tried to do. Yeah. And we rebuke what he's going to try to do in the future. God, your word says, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We might have tears in our eyes because of the way it looked, but that's okay because we know Jesus went. But God, we're going to cry in the midst of our tears. We're going to lift our hands and praise your name because we know that this too shall pass. Oh God, we come and we believe that if we continue to lift up our young people, we will see the glory of the Lord revealed because of them showing up and moving this ministry to a whole new and another level. Amen. God, help us to not be those obstinate people, those older people who continue to stay stuck in our ways and not make room for our young people. Help us to have the energy to just listen to them so that we will be able to give them room to praise you, give them room to 
worship you. Give them room to glorify you. Not because they want to do it because of mommy's God or daddy's God, but because of the God that they know in their heart, the God that is in them. God, we come declaring your glory on this place. And not only this place, we come declaring your glory on the body of Christ. For it's not just this church that is affected by it, it's affected all over the country. But God, we just say thank you because you kept the doors open. We say thank you because you gave us a place to worship you. We say thank you because you gave us technology to reach out to those who won't come. We say thank you because we know you didn't have to do it, but you did. So God, we praise you on today. And as we praise you, we're lifting up our young people and we're placing them in the hollow of your hand. Only to be excited that on the next Sunday we come, we will see more young people declaring that Jesus is Lord. Well, oh God, as you do that, we ask that you would continue to watch over our elderly, watch over our seniors, look over our own dear Mother Black, our uh, senior deacon, deacon Platt. God, look over those who are yet in the hospitals and nursing homes. Uh, look over those who are behind prison walls. God, we ask that you would let them know uh, that they still have a chance uh, to get closer to you. God, we ask that you look over the families during this time, this Christmas season, the Depression seems to be running rampant. And we don't know who's depressed and who's not depressed. Oh God, we know that it runs rampant and it affects everybody in a different way. We come against suicide right now. We come against self-injury right now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we come against mental illness right now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we pray this prayer because this is a time where people have forgotten the reason for the season. And so God, we want them to know uh, if they walk by the building, they're going to hear some people calling out the name uh, that's above every name, uh, where every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Uh, to call out the name of Jesus, Jesus will fix it. If it's going to be fixed, uh, it's going to be because of Jesus. Uh, if you're going to be blessed, uh, it's going to be because of Jesus. If you're going to move to the next level, it's going to be because of Jesus. Jesus is the reason for this season. Let us not forget it in the midst of our shopping. Let us not forget it in the midst of our office parties and celebration. Let us not forget it in the midst of us putting up Christmas trees and decorations that Jesus is the reason for the season. In the master's name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Someone once said that when uh, the devil cannot get to you, what he will do is he will try to get to the closest person next to you. And so that's why we have to stay prayed up. In the midst of it all, we have to stay prayed up. And we have to be careful not to be discouraged because of what we see. We have to be encouraged. Amen? Amen. We have to be encouraged because we know that God is in the blessing business. Amen? Amen. And we want to uh, welcome our special guests who are with us here today, Reverend Darwin and his wife, Peggy Johnson. I um, want to thank you for the good chance to be here visiting for the first time. And they reached out uh, to me over the internet. Um, just uh, looking for a place to come and worship. So we thank God um, for having them come to be with us. We also want to uh, thank God for our returning uh, visitor, Sister Valerie Miller, a Grill's mother who was here with us today. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. We are just so happy to have you. Uh, we want you to know, you know, we have still quartered on pews and we're getting to the place where we can, you know, do what the world is doing and get closer, but we have to be careful. You listen to my prayer. I talked about a, a triple demic, uh, RSV, the flu, and COVID. We have RSV, the flu, and COVID running rampant. So you need to wear your mask. Let me help you with something. If you're going to Walgreens and you're going to CVS, they have pharmacies. Come on. Pharmacies receive sick people. When you, at least if you don't put your mask on anywhere, you need to be putting it on when you're going to a pharmacy. Amen? Amen. 
That's why doctor's offices no longer allow you to come without putting on a mask. And so we encourage you to wear your mask. We're not going to make anybody wear a mask, but we want to at least put it out there so that you don't say that we were not obedient and caused you to get an illness. Um, we we're concerned about our older people um, contracting an illness. And so we want you to wear your mask, put your mask on and, and be conscious. You can praise God. You know, with your mask on. If it gets a little uncomfortable, you're welcome to take it off. And anytime you get that uncomfortable, you're welcome to go into our library or an overflow room and, and kind of make yourself feel comfortable before you come back in. But we want everybody to be safe. Amen? Amen. I understand what it is to have COVID. In fact, I had it twice. And so we want you to get your shots and boosters or whatever. We're not trying to be political or what have you. You know, if you have a good way to keep your immune system built and keep yourself from being sick, God bless you. Go ahead and do that. If you believe in getting the shots, God bless you. Go ahead and do that. We just want some healthy people so we can worship the Lord in spirit and truth. Amen. As I mentioned, we have a number of things going on. I want to keep our sister Stacy in prayer. She's in St. Barnabas. If you have not connected with her in any way, we want to keep um, one of my former students, Dr. Melissa Stuckey, who is one of the professors at um, Deacon Harris's alma mater in North Carolina, Elizabeth City College. I'm so proud of her because she's at my Deacon School making some good waves. Her name is Dr. Melissa Stuckey. She's uh, head of the African American Studies Department. She just went into surgery. We want to keep her in prayer. Again, the family of uh, Pam McDonald and uh, Xavier Jacobs want to keep them in prayer also. Next Sunday is what? Well, Y'all should be excited. It's the, the day we have designated when Jesus was born. Come to Bible study, I help you understand, you know, because people want to argue down and say that's not the day or whatever. We can take a historic perspective, but that's the day that we chose to celebrate Christ. Amen? Amen. You know, and I know people are struggling and they're struggling. Yeah, this is the first time church been on Christmas. I just told you, we did it in, 12, in, two, in December uh, 2016. Y'all probably even forgot. We had a great time. All of a sudden now, because we went through this little COVID thing and we got, you know, then we didn't have all of this Facebook and Zoom and all of that. Now we wonder whether we could come. Listen, you're welcome to come on Zoom. You're welcome to come on Facebook. You're welcome to come in person. I'm not going to judge anybody. I'm just saying, it's the day that the Lord made. Amen? It's Christmas. And, uh, if you're a Christian, you should be celebrating the day that we designated that Christ was born. And I want you to feel comfortable. Um, we're going to have pretty much a change in our service. I won't be giving announcements like I'm doing now and all of that. But wear your Christmas sweater. Put on a Christmas sweater. Next Sunday is Christmas sweater Sunday. Uh, uh, we did an ugly sweater, Christmas sweater Sunday, and people was all over Facebook. I hope we shouldn't call it ugly, but we're going to call it a Christmas sweater. So if yours is nice, mine is nice, and yours is nice, nobody's is ugly. If you bought it, it's yours. Wear your sweater on next Sunday. Yeah. I think I covered it all with that, right? Uh, we want to be praying for our ministries as we get, pre get prepared for January. You know, our meeting come this January. We want to get prepared and we want to be mindful, get our ministries ready and going. You understand the assessments that we want you to focus on this year. I want to tell you, we had a powerful prayer on Thursday night. Deacon Harris and Deacon Platt are always right there. If nobody's going to pray. It's going to be the three of us praying. Brother AJ was on the line with us. Brother Joaquin was on the line with us. We had a good prayer. I don't know why people are afraid to pray. I just, I sent it out to the men. Either they're going to listen, you know, I, they, they, some just listen to the prayer. But, you know, some of us, you know, we're inhibited by that. And that's, that's your challenge. But we prayed. And we prayed so hard that um, Attorney Marvin Breaker, he was unable to be with us, but he was pending a court case and he just sent us a text, a prayer and look a, a prayer and a text that just blessed us tremendously. Brother Runcy couldn't be with us, so not only did he pray, but he sent two hundred dollars to the men's ministry. Isn't that a blessing? So I'm not mad at nobody, you know. 
you know, we grown, so I can't make nobody do nothing that they don't want to do. But I do know that the church that prays together stays together. And that's why we have been able to make it with the remnant that we have here in West Orange. And I think God is about to do some greater and great things. I met with our new mayor. She will be mayor-elect, um, mayor-elect McCartney. I met with her on last week, and she has actually been a friend of ours from day one. She was here at our ribbon cutting. She called me numerous times in the town to come to the town, and she was a councilwoman for years um, to work with her and, and, and pray with her. And so we want to um, keep her in prayer as she starts her new term from council person to mayor. And what is important is she called clergy together. Her first meeting was with clergy to see what could be done and what we needed um, from that administration. So I was I was very impressed by that. And so we're going to keep working with her. We, again, we're not being political, but we just trying to make sure that we have all our irons in the fire. If we're going to do ministry in the community, we need it to be connected to the community. Amen? And so if you've been in ministry and you've been worried about your $1,000 assessment, I just sat down the other day and I said this. It's $85 a month. And you can go multiply that pull out your calculator and you see what that comes up. But it's about $85 or so a month. Your ministry can make the assessment. But you can't wait to June to start. You can't wait to September to start doing convocation. Start this January. I'm looking for every ministry by next December to be able to meet their assessment. Amen? Amen. With that said, it's giving time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It is giving time. And as you get ready for your gifts, I want to remind you, we celebrate Kwanzaa here at Nia Fellowship Baptist Church in our overflow room on Saturday, December 31st. Saturday, December 31st at 8 p.m. We're going to have the candle lighting, story time, sweet treats, fellowship, everybody's birthday, honoring our ancestors and reflection. We know that Kwanzaa is not our religious effort, but Kwanzaa is our cultural effort to merge that with our religion to make sure that people know about Kwanzaa and making sure as an African-American church the only African-American Baptist church. So you don't say the only African-American church. No, it's the only African-American Baptist church in West Orange. And we would be doing a disservice if we didn't celebrate Kwanzaa to let people know we want to use those principles and merge them with our Christian principles and be more powerful. Amen? Amen. And so in the spirit of Kwanzaa, we will have a gift Zawadi Exchange. If you wish to participate in the exchange, please bring a wrapped gift. The minimum value should be $10. So I know you got $10. Somebody go get $10 for Christmas. So you can take that $10 and, and you know, it, it costs $10 in the dollar store anyway. So go, go get your $10 gift. And let's, um, let's be ready to wear our African attire. The colors are red, black, or green. Amen? Amen. And so in our giving, we have to continue to be a blessing. Tithing is important, and we know that everybody is not a tither. You have to grow to become a tither. And I challenge you to make a commitment in your giving. And if you make that commitment and you begin to grow, you will find yourself moving to a place where you'll be able to give to God in the way that he wants us to give. He said, test me. Read your Bible, Malachi, bring it ten. He said, test me. God, that one only place where God is saying, test me and see. Bring your tithes and your offering into the storehouse. And I will show you that I will pour out blessings that you don't have room enough to receive. I have been a recipient, and I think I'm a blessing in the, in the process of a blessing. And every day is a blessing because I have new mercies every morning. And if God woke you up this morning, guess what? You are blessed. Amen. You don't have room enough to receive that. And so we want you to do that. You know, if our seniors, if our seniors can, can, can modify uh, their lives and they can be able to give, and I put it like this, they give, our seniors give more than $85 a month. 
I know because my dad's 93 and he outgives a whole lot of people in the air. I don't know how he does it, but I know he has been blessed. Amen? Amen. So dig deep, say to God, I want to make a commitment in my giving and be a blessing to the ministry. And all we do, we just want to thank him forever and forever. If you thank him in advance, your blessing will be on us way. Just want to thank you. those who desire to give but did not have to give. Oh God, let them know if they trust in you that giving will come. And God, as they give, let them know your word says it will be given back to them. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. God, we send you our love in this prayer and this praise. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God say, We come now to proclamation. After the Somatic Scripture by the Neon Gospel Singers, Pastor Armand C. Black will give us a message from the Lord. 
At this Christmas, when Christ, when Christ arrives, will he find a warm heart? Mark the season of Advent by loving and serving others with God's own love and concern. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to be the worship leader for this day. Amen. Amen. Amen.
you will call me. God, I thank you for that awesome responsibility. But God, now, this is not about me. I ask that you would stand up. Hide me behind the cross. Allow the people to see you, hear you, and not me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in my sight. Oh, Lord, my strength, my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. In the next seven days, we'll celebrate one of the high and holy days that we know as Christmas. With everything that is going on in the world today, we need to make sure that we and our children understand what God did for all of us on the day we celebrate that Jesus was born. It's good to buy the gifts and it's good to, you know, trade off the clothes and trade off the toys. and You know, it's good to do all of that. It's good to do the Christmas carols and all of that. But we need to help our young people understand that it's deeper than that. Jesus was born in a manger. Well, let me get a little deeper than that. Jesus was born in a messy manger. But his manger was special. Yes. It represented the messiness that we are actually living in today. Think about it. Think about it. The manger was not a beautiful bed or comfortable resting place. It was messy. Yes. Understand clearly that a manger or a trough is a feeder that is made of carved stone, wood, metal construction, and is used to hold food for the animals as in a stable. Yes. Mangers were mostly used in livestock raising. They were also used to feed wild animals. Yes. So that couldn't be such a great thing if they feeding them and licking the tongues in there, they got the mouth in there, they just eating up. It, it, it's an unclean place. Yeah. Yeah. Don't sanitize yeah. it. Come on. It, it was an unclean place. And in livestock raising. And this is where our Savior was laid after he was born. He was born in it. Put a pen in that. He was born in it. But he didn't have to lay in it. Or stay in it. He was born in it. He didn't have to keep laying in it and staying in it. But it represented something bigger for all of us. Just think about what it must have been like for Mary Joseph and some random shepherds looking into the face of deity and overlooking what deity is lying in. Look at where they lay in. You know, we have this tent. We say born in a baby. We know he was born, but he Technically, he wasn't born in the manger. He was born and placed in, in the manger. Emmanuel, the promised savior, had finally come. In the dim light of an animal stable, the first look at the Son of God was seen. Baby Jesus had transformed the manger, the messy manger. He transformed it. They couldn't, they looked in and they couldn't see the mess no more because that was the only place, the safest place to put him. But he transformed the messy manger into a manger of grace. He transformed the messy manger into a manger of hope. And he transformed the messy manger into a manger of truth. This is why John declared, let me help you on the text. He says, and the word which was Christ, yeah. became flesh, yeah. which was human incarnate, right Bible study student, and lived among us, and we saw his glory, that means they saw his honor, his majesty, such glory as an only begotten son receives from his father, full of grace, full of loving kindness, full of hope, the security that our future would be what? Okay. your future will be okay. And truth. Truth that life is what it is. Somebody say it is what it is. The reality is, and some of y'all don't even want to think like this, we're going to live and we're going to die. 
They don't John was saying that the Shekinah glory was no longer in the tent. He was now a man. Most of the time we forget or are not aware of the greatness of this miracle called Christmas. And how Christmas shouts out what we learned in Sunday school. Christmas says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Just as Mary and Joseph and the shepherds saw glory, the glory of Jesus in the manger, we too behold the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. You need to take some time this Christmas just to, just to stare into the face of God. You know, I used to have this thing in my office. Before I face the day, I want to face God. He is nearer than you know while you lay in your messy situation. Just remember that God's glory can be revealed even if you are not in church. Talking to you on Facebook. Talking to you who catching me on YouTube. Even though you are not in church and your life has been turned upside down, God is still there waiting for you to reveal his glory. It is important that we take time to help our children see beyond the glitter of Christmas season and teach them the true meaning of Christ's birth. Don't focus on the date. I'll say that again. Don't focus on the date because you might get so intelligent and smart and you might start digging deep down in history and then you might get caught up in that and forget that the date has nothing to do with Jesus. We chose the date. Look at your name said, we chose the date. Oh, we need to understand that. In fact, it might, and if you dig deep enough, you'll find out that it probably wasn't even in winter. We chose the day. And we chose the day for a reason because we wanted to, oh my God, the Lord just dropped it. We wanted to confuse the enemy. Because the enemy wanted to take this time and, and its own pagan issues and try to make it something celebratory and get drunk and do all those things. Well, so we had to stick something there and said, no, we're not going to let you mess up our, our community and everything. We're going to say that the law yeah. on December 25th came into our lives. We're going to focus on the fact that we chose this day to honor the most thrilling story ever known to man. And that story began in Bethlehem in at Christmas. So before you sing Away in a Manger and rap with the lyrics, you need to understand what you're saying. Away in a manger, no crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus laid down his sweet head. The stars in the sky looked down where he lay. Oh, y'all yeah, remember this from Sunday school, you know? The little Lord Jesus asleep in the hay. The cattle are lowering, the babies awake, but little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes. And I, I, I wanted to even deal with that. I, I said, let me break down this song like I would the scripture because it's indicating that there was no crying. Song indicates that Jesus was comfortable with dealing with his manger as it was. His grace was sufficient for him. Oh, I'm talking to somebody. We have to make sure that we remember and that our children know Christmas is about God's amazing grace. Christmas is about God's amazing hope. Christmas is about God's amazing truth. And that is why we came up with the songs that we came up with. That's why the devil wants us to be depressed. And that's why the devil wants us to, to feel bad during the holidays and spend all of our money and, and get uh, broke financially, mess up our budget because he wants to mess up our head. He doesn't want us to reflect on this is about amazing grace, amazing hope, and amazing truth. And so we get the song Amazing Grace. Will always be my song of praise. For it was grace that brought my liberty. I do not know just why he came to love me so. But what? He looked beyond my faults and saw my need. Then we will know and remember that God loved us so much that he sent Jesus 
But Jesus came and died so that we all will have another opportunity. You can change the messy manger of your life right now. Tell your neighbor, right now. You can change it. You can change it right now by living in God's grace. You can change your messy manger right now by living in God's hope. You can change your messy manger right now by living in God's truth. Pastor Platt, is it that easy? Yes, it's just that easy. And even though people cannot see the messiness of your manger, you know the manger that you're living in. You know the manger that you walked out of this morning to get to church. You know the manger that stayed with you and was in your head while you were driving your car. You know the manger of those hidden things that you wouldn't want nobody to know about that manger. That's what, what I'm talking about. The manger, the family secret uh, that don't nobody know about. What happens in this house stays in this house. That's the manger I'm talking about. When you live in His grace, there is no single definition that describes grace. We try to, you know, catechize, catechize, you know, get people to go to catechism and try to get them to describe it. But let me help you with this. Grace is God giving us what we need, not what we deserve. Grace is a state of sanctification enjoyed through divine assistance. Grace is when someone does something for you that you could never deserve or earn or repay. Grace is all that God does for us on the basis of the cross. Uh, let me help you with this. Uh, I got some smart people here. They get a little detail. So get your pen out. The acronym for grace is God's uh, riches uh, at Christ's uh, expense. Well, somebody needed to say it again. They couldn't write that fast. Uh, the G is for God. Uh, the R is for riches. Uh, the A is for act. Uh, the C is for Christ. And the E is for expense. What Jesus Christ did on the cross already paid it all. God does for us by grace. Grace lies in the manger of mess. But Jesus, our Savior, is fully blessed. When you live in hope, when you live in hope, people cannot survive without living in hope. Hope keeps us from going through painful experiences and fear of what the future may hold. And some of us are challenged to live in hope because we're stuck on what the future may hold. Some of us are challenged by hope because we look at the Ukraine and we cannot even imagine sirens going off and bombs blasting and our power being out. And so we live, and when we live in hope, we can live beyond that. Because that stuff would spook us to death. In a fallen world where people face poverty, disease, hunger, injustice, uh, disaster, war, and terrorism. We need a living hope. Yes. The Bible tells us in Ephesians 2 and 12 that those who don't have Jesus do not have hope. Believers are blessed with real and substantial hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But the power of God's word and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, this living hope quickens our minds and souls. Oh, you don't believe me? Go to Hebrews 4 and 12. It, it, it changes our thoughts. It changes our words. And it changes our actions. Once dead in our sins, we now live with the hope of our own resurrection. Sometimes we're too challenged to even deal with that. I'm almost done. Last thing, when you live in truth, the, the word of God calls Christians to live in such a way that the truth of Christ is evident in their lives. The power of the gospel is displayed in the life of a believer by the transformation that it brings. Come on, Pastor Platt. The good news is that Christians have truth to live by. As you follow Jesus, as you grow in your relationship with him, you will learn truth. You will live true, and eventually your life will be transformed. You will be blessed by God when you live the truth. Uh, walk in the light of God's word. Learn practical biblical principles every day of everyday life. And more blessings will come when you grow in your love for God. So don't just hang on the mistletoe this Christmas. I know you like to sing that song. I'm hanging on the mistletoe. Just know that in your manger of mess, 
blessed. You can still be blessed. Look at your neighbors and neighbor. Don't worry about the mess. You can still be blessed. Just hang on to Jesus. Hold on to his unchanging hand. If you can reach up to touch the hem of his garment. Just hang on to Jesus. Hang on to his hope. God sent Jesus because he loved us. Just hold on in your manger of mess. You can still be blessed. Just hang on to Jesus. Hang on to his grace. God sent Jesus because he loved us. Just hang on to his grace. In your manger of mess, you can still be blessed. Just hang on to Jesus' truth. God sent Jesus because he loved us. When you say Merry Christmas, you're saying have a grateful life in Jesus. In the midst of your sense nature. When you say Merry Christmas, you're saying have a hopeful life. In the midst of your messy manger, I don't know who I'm talking to, but you know, like I know, you got some vessel after you, you got some stuff around you, some of it is a distraction, some of it is in the way.
someone that said Jesus is born. You have to be able to have your testimony and help them to know what he is to you. Is he part of your life? Is he the center of your life? If you make him the center, you won't even have to shout go to that. Because they will see it in your life. They will see the grace in you. They will see the hope in you. And they will see the truth in you. Those of you who are watching us via the internet, those of you who are watching us via Facebook Live, we invite you to make Jesus Lord of your life. We want you to know in the midst of your best, you still can be blessed. Jesus, Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All that's good. Thank you. 
the all wise God's power, his majesty, his domain. May his peace that passes all understanding guide our hearts and minds and keep us closer and closer to Christ Jesus. Now unto him who is able to keep us faultless before us throne, the all wise God, his majesty. His majesty. We yeah. have to remember that. When we pursue his peace that passes all understanding yes. and allowing it to guide our hearts and minds and keeping us close to Christ Jesus. Remember that. And if you remember that, you will remember the power and the magnitude of Jesus. And when you remember that, you have victory. Tell somebody you have victory. I don't know about you, but I have victory. I leave here with hope. I leave here with joy. And I leave here knowing that God is going to keep on blessing me. In the name of Jesus.